5H Wellesley College present the history behind the name Days Bay. The original Māori name for Days Bay was Otto Motoro. It was a Nata era village in 1865. Days Bay was first called Hawtrey Bay after Reverend Montague Hawtrey. John H. Williams, a rich Wellington ship owner, bought land in Hawtrey Bay in the late 1800s and built a wharf in 1895 and turned the bay into a sport and holiday place for day trippers and holiday makers. A place to buy food and drink was organised. Playground equipment was brought in for young children. Races and other activities were set up for older kids and the place became a great success. Hawtrey Bay was renamed Days Bay after George Monty Day. George Day was born in 1795 in Kent, England. He married Anne Beechin on March 18, 1822 at All Saints Church in Kent. His family came to New Zealand on a boat called the Arab in 1841. George and Anne Day had 10 children. William Todd owned Hawtrey Bay. He employed George Day to look after the land when William Todd went to the South Island to live. George Day and his family built a cottage in Days Bay where Wellesley College is now. They ran a boat that took people on day trips from Wellington to Days Bay. They lived in Days Bay for five years. George began another business business transporting goods around the local bays as well as further south to Port Cooper in Christchurch. After their house was badly damaged by a massive earthquake in November 1848, the Day family left their bay aboard the schooner flirt and moved to Sumner in the new settlement of Christchurch. There was no accommodation in Sumner, so the family first lived in a tent in Gollins Bay, below Evans Pass before moving into the Sumner store. George Day then became the boss on the building of the Little Tin to Sumner Road. Because of Sumner's beauty, George Day decided to build a large house next door to the Sumner's store in 1858. Here you can see his two-storey house and the store. With the arrival of our first four sailor ships, there was a lot of tired and hungry people walking from Littleton to Christchurch. There was no accommodation or food for these sailors, so George today began a refreshment and accommodation business at his home. First known as the Canterbury Arms, it was soon called Today's Hotel. The, the hotel business grew. George Day also started a freighting business as well as becoming the signal man for ships and boats crossing the Sumner Bar. George Day died on the 13th of February 1880, aged 85. Day's hotel was destroyed by fire in 1892. Back in Day's Bay Eastbourne, Day's Bay House was built in 1903 for J.H. Williams, Wellington Steam Ferry Company. The resort was successful and included donkey rides on the beach in 1901. J.H. Williams sold up in 1905 and the new owners split off the building sites on the land they did not need. In 1907, a water chute was added to the resort the largest water chute in Australasia at the time. It helped attract up to 5,000 people on sunny days, many who travelled on the ferry from Wellington to Days Bay. But in 1912, the slide was closed because the company who owned it owed people lots of money. It was sold and moved to Auckland's domain for two more summers. It was finally taken apart in 1915 as less people wanted to do fun things the beginning of World War One. Days Bay House, the resort hotel, was only a little bit successful, and in 1913, it and the grounds were sold to Miss Gladys Somerville. The building and grounds became Croydon School. 
in 1914, Wellington Council bought a beach and a field. The council told the field Williams part after John H. Williams because his mother donated a large amount of money to buy it with. Mrs. W. R. Williams was given a copy of the following decision by the council. That this council place on record its deep sense of the public spirit manifested by Mrs. W. R. Williams in contributing a sum of £1,500 towards the fund of the purchase of the Days Bay grounds for public purposes and in recognition of the generosity, hereby resolves that the reserve shall henceforth be known as Williams Park. Days Bay Beautiful Wooden Pavilion was very popular providing teas on its verandas, a restaurant, even dances and outdoor concerts. Unfortunately, it was totally destroyed by an early Sunday morning fire in October 1952. It was eventually replaced by a, sm a smaller building, which is the pavilion that stands here there today. Kia ora and thank you for watching.